Here is our first look at all of Iwata's brand new LS and WS spray guns, their Series 2, that are new to the market. And here's exactly what we have to demo. Now we're going to be demoing out the LS400 and the WS400, and since I spray solvent base coat, we're not going to be using the water-based WS400. The WS400 for base in blue is meant for the future of wet-on-wet -wet waterborne technologies like sealers and different things like that. We're not going to be using this because we're not using water base yet, but it is a gun that we look to use in the future as well. Today we're going to focus on using the LS400 here to spray metallic on our MDX and a WS400 Series 2 for spraying down that clear down the whole side. And this is what the gun looks like. This is the LS400. Oh, now this is going to be the digital version. You can see it's actually covered right in this area. Now, nowadays, I really do love the digital versions because I don't like the extra gauge here on the airline. Now, first impressions when holding this gun, I feel like it's dialed back just a little bit and it's more comfortable in the hand itself. And this will be the non-digital version, obviously just a little bit cheaper. If that's something where you're looking to save just a little bit of money, you'll still get the same exact result. We got this in a 1.2. You can get it in any fluid tip size you want. So don't worry about that from 1.2 all the way up to 1.5. My recommendation is gonna be between a 1.2 and a 1.3 for ease of spraying. You're not gonna get material taking too long to dry with either of those. But if you have a thicker material and you're looking to spray a sealer, which you definitely can do here, you can spray sealer out of these guns, then at that point, then maybe a 1.3, 1.4 might work a little bit better for you in your situation. So again, you'll have your booklet with every single one of them. The cool thing I like about this is it might seem a little bit silly, but what's happening nowadays with most gun manufacturers is they're telling you to go on your phone and check it out. But having just a little Bible here to show you, especially if you're new, let's say if you're newbie and you're buying these guns, this is a big deal to know how the gun works, the adjustments, and look at the fan pattern, and it's put into a nice little book. So a really nice little touch from Iwata. We've kind of gotten away from this, and diving back into it really puts a smile on my face. Of course, you can get this online as well. Just have to scan that little code, and you can see everything. So then we have here just the basic version, the non-digital version. You can see that this area is just a part of the gun, and that will be just it. You'll have your gauge that will go here, and it's the same exact gun. It's set up completely the same, and it's ready to spray. Same design you'll find here. This is a 1.2, and the build quality of these particular guns is second to none. I really like the way that these knobs fit on. The LPH W400, they had a little bit of problems getting on and getting into that thread, but these really works pretty well because the thread goes over the actual gun body itself, making it just a little bit easier. So that gun set it wide open, it's good to go. And let's see what else the box has to offer as far as the kit is concerned. And inside the contents of the box, you're gonna find something we haven't seen in quite a long time. There's a gun manufacturer that still includes the metal cup, something a little bit old school, that I do like to see from time to time. Of course, a lot of you guys nowadays are using your PPS attachments, but I do see from time to time people still using these metal cups and it brings back some good memories. So kudos to you guys. Probably won't use it, but definitely like seeing a actual gun that comes with everything you'll need to get started right away. And last but not least, they do have the tool gun kit and something that is never included with any spray gun manufacturer that I've seen up to this date is lubricant, which is very important for those knobs. And sometimes inside the trigger, it might get a little stiff after a while. So you'll put a little bit of oil into the underside here. And what that will do is help lubricate that trigger to keep it nice and smooth as well. You're also going to find your key wrench. That will be for taking off your fluid tip to clean it out. Let's go ahead and see the WS. Taking a look at our WS400, this was one of the first guns that I fell in love with in my professional career and it really shaped my career. So let's take a look and see what differences we might notice with the WS400. I never really got a chance to use the LS in the past, but now that we have the opportunity, we're definitely going to see how well that works. So once again, you're gonna receive the same thing with every gun. Oh, and here she is. Now it definitely resembles that first 1.0 with the same similar style coloring theme, a little bit more matte on the knobs and the air nozzle as well. Now when looking at both of these guns, they look very, very similar. Now this is the 1.3 HD 
and this gun was designed for the high delivery of the clear coat through the fine atomization to the panel. So you're gonna have that quick delivery, get you in and out of the booth quick, but the same quality that we've known for an Iwata or a WS400 to deliver the paint to the surface much better. And again, this is the 1.3 HD. Now you can remove the fluid tip to clean it out and the gun, but do not remove this baffle because that can damage the gun right in here. So just removing this and the needle itself to clean the gun and you're good. Now I did choose once again to use the digital version of this spray gun. And I feel like this is probably the best versions when it comes down to using any spray gun. So at this point, we're ready to go. We're gonna take these into the booth. They're gonna be using our LS 400 for our base coat application and our WS 400 for our clear. Well back here at the shop and I want to clear up a couple thoughts I know you already have. These guns look pretty identical to what we've seen in the past. However, these guns have been completely redesigned. There's been a lot of research and development. Every issue that they've had on the older guns, they've taken one by one and they have corrected and they have fixed. So from the passageways, from the air cap, any issue they've had along the way that's been reported, they've taken a lot of time to make sure the Series 2, okay, these are Series 2 guns, are good to go. Now, what you cannot do is just take off an air cap from a base coat gun and make it a clear coat gun. No, there's actually the fluid tip and the inner workings are going to be a little bit different. Things that you cannot even see are different. Now, I also want to tell you that if you want the blue one, you can't just get the blue one, okay? The blue one is meant for exclusively second gen water base, wet on wet applications. It will not spray base coat in solvent the way you want, and it will not spray your clear coat the way you want. So these are very specific because of the new coatings that are coming out, they have to be specific the guys out west in California, they have different coatings and they need that specialized spray gun to spray these coatings. But for us guys still spraying solvent and first gen water-based paint, this is the way to go. This base coat is the way to go. These were designed over a long period of time to atomize and specialize in the coating that you are spraying. So let's go ahead and look at what we're spraying today. And we're here in the booth, and today this is what we're going to be using our WNLS 400s on. You can see here we replaced the door. Now, I like to go ahead and paint the inside and then spray the door on the whole entire vehicle so that everything looks exactly the same. Now, if you are a high production shop, this might not be the best route, but this is the only way that I can ensure it's gonna look good as soon as it's done. So what I do here is we put sealer on the door and then we base it and then we put it back on the car, give a little scuff, right? And then now we know that we don't have to mess with the sealer on the car and the paper unmasking and all that extra that really slows us down once we're in the booth. So what we're gonna be doing here is we'll put our clear base over the whole entire finish. And I like the clear base to use it as a visual aid right now. It's kind of cool in the booth. It's probably around 70 degrees, a little bit cooler here tonight. So what we're gonna do is use the clear base as a visual aid, and then we'll do our blending. One thing I noticed that I did not notice at first is that our digital versions actually come with this beautiful midnight chrome, whereas the non-digital versions are that classic chrome. Pretty cool though to distinguish the two other than just a digital readout. We're gonna use the uh, pressure regulator right here. Set around 24 PSI, see what that looks like. We got our clear base down. Now we're ready for base. A couple things I noticed off the bat. 1920 PSI is where I wanna be. Too much pressure with this gun, it seems like it's going all over the place. The fan has to be dialed in at least a turn and a half. That wide, wide fan, it kinda messes with the split um, nozzle. The split nozzle is pretty much sending two air patterns so you don't have any dry spray. But if you're too far away, you're gonna see a little dead spot in the middle. So make sure you're right at a good distance, around a good five, six inches at the most, and this is where the gun performs the best. You're gonna see that right now. We're gonna dial it in a little bit and then see how it looks. So what I'm gonna do here is get the coverage on the door. I'm not gonna start the blend yet, but I want nice coverage, and then I can probably hopefully do the blend after one coat.
All right. The effectiveness of pre-painting the door has gotten us to the point that in one coat, it's covered. On the next coat, I blend and I'm done. So no sand piling on the door edges, no sand piling on the quarter panel. This thing looks completely smooth, but you cannot overpower this gun with pressure and overpower it with a big fan. Close the fan down, open up the fluid, get your pressure around 19, 20, 21, seems to be working right now for me. Let's let this flash and see what it does. Now while that's flashing at my settings, let's take a look at the fan pattern. In and around here, that's about five to six inches. Okay, we can see it's got a nice even pattern. I want to take it further and see what it does. So maybe like a little bit too far if you weren't doing it properly. Let's take a look. We look like we're a little bit top heavy and a little bit bottom heavy, a little bit empty in the middle. Again, with the split dual technology of the nozzles, if you're not spraying properly with this gun, you will not atomize it properly. The gun is already atomizing the paint internally before it even comes out of the air cap. So it's doing its job. Your job is to make sure you're applying it properly. Once again, at the right distance, we've got a beautiful fan pattern. At the wrong distance, still pretty big, but light in the middle, okay? You want something a little bit more solid. With the dual technology, what they're stating is, is that you don't have to be a perfect painter but you have to get at the right distance in order for it to properly correct for incorrect overlapping. So this makes sure you get enough material on the fluid. That's why it's got the dual technology. We're ready for clear. Now these guns, based off me using them right now and in the past, these guns are not for beginner painters. There's a lot of guns on the market that are a little bit more easier to use. This gun is for a moderate to advanced painter that knows how to manipulate and change the spray gun when things are just a little bit different. These guns, when they're used at the optimal settings, are gonna outperform most spray guns. Now, for clear coat, let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my fan, I'm gonna back it out, and I'm only gonna turn it in one and a half turns. I'm bam, I'm gonna leave it there. My fluid, I want this to perform maximum amount of fluid. I'm gonna back this guy all the way out, almost. Okay, and then I'm going to turn it in clockwise until it stops, it's set at maximum. Full fluid, leave it. Over on the pressure, we'll maximize it by setting the pressure as we spray. So maybe at around 20 to 23 PSI. We'll see if that works for this gun. With the other WS400, the 1.0, I was right locked in around 27 to 28 to 29 PSI. That's what worked for me, but it looks like this is operating at a much lower standard. Now for the digital spray portion, this is completely removable just like this. So possibly if you're going to replace it or even clean it, it does remove easy. Not sure how much of the functionality of it is, but it's kind of pretty cool to be honest. So this will snap back in here. We'll adjust our air right here. Let's go ahead and clear. What I'll do here is I'm gonna spray my first panel. I'll stop and overlap. I'll pick it up over here. I'll overlap all the way past my fuel tank cover or I'll just take it all the way. I'll see what works for me as I'm going.
You are not going to find a softer fan pattern in any other spray gun than this. And this is right off the gun, the first pass. Barely any dry spots because of that split action, dual action air nozzle is maximizing it, right? So if your overlap's not perfect, it's like, you know what? I'm going to help you guys out. And I'm going to send two fan patterns that are small and they're going to meet in the middle and they're really going to help you out. So it's pretty clean. It got a little dry in this area, just a touch. But I don't want to overdo it because guess what? Like I said, it's cold out here tonight and I don't need runs. I'll let this really clear up in the second, uh, second coat. You saw how I started here. I kind of continued over the top, came down the C pillar, and then I just connected the two. I didn't decide that before, but I just felt like that was gonna work out best. So let's let this flash and we'll go from there. Second coat, I let this dry for about 15 minutes. I really want that first coat to tack up. Now we're gonna lay it on under just a touch more wet and a little bit slower. I'm gonna be watching it from the side, make sure it goes on completely clean. This, when it's set up perfectly, wow, it's a good gun. All right. Beautiful. Now, the one thing I love about Iwata is that they atomize the thinnest and the wettest coat so you will get a beautiful finish without fear of buildup or any runs. Take a look at the gas cap, the edges, everything is crispy clean, but completely smooth. Some spray guns, you have to really spray it on there to get the finish smooth. But what are you doing in the meantime? You're building up the edges and it looks like garbage. It looks like a resprayed car. This does not look like a resprayed car. It doesn't have any dirt in it. It's smooth. It's got a factory finish in it. This looks like a car that has never been touched. And that's what we got out of this gun. So I'm, I'm liking the way it looks, but 
let's see how it dries. With the material we put on there, let's see if it can hold a shine and dry good. We're gonna bake it out, unmask it, we'll check it out. Oh, back here the next day, she's all dry. And the most important thing for a painter is looking good the second day, and it has to do with the actual application of the paint, right? So if your paint is looking good that first day, it might not look the second if you really poured it on. So one of the things I like about the Series 2 is that, God, it atomizes the paint before it hits the panel. So you're not going through that in the air. It's actually done in the passageways of the spray gun body, which is something that really got me hooked on this spray gun since I started spraying it. So let's take this out and see what she looks like outside of the booth. And here she is outside of the booth. We can see this consistency of the color is on point. So we didn't have too much overspray going in this way towards this fender and obviously towards the back end. A really nice blend here all the way through. So that's what you're gonna come to expect with a high-end gun like this. Now, could we got this finished with another gun? Surely we could, but it's the overtime consistency. How well do these guns hold up? It's the same consistent pattern, same consistent technique is what you need to get your guys self into if you're a professional. Again, do it yourselfers. Do I really expect you to buy one of these guns? No. This is not one of them that I'm not gonna recommend to you. I'm gonna recommend to these guys that are spraying each and every day. The guys are doing around 50 to 100 hours a week. This is the gun for you that will keep you consistent and get you guys rolling. So really enjoying what I'm seeing here, but let me give you my final thoughts about this spray gun. Now I still remember early on in my career how watching YouTube and I got this original series the Supernova, the WS400, and how it saved me. And, you know, I kind of fell out of touch with it as more guns entered into the market and there were some things that were a little bit off of it. So I dreamed of the day that we would get something back in the market, the Series 2, and that's just what we got. Went ahead and fixed up all the issues that we had with the original. Mind you, this is still a fantastic gun but I can guarantee you that each and every batch of these guns is manufactured properly, and that's just what we have. Now, the one thing I do wanna make sure and convey to you guys is that these are the base coat guns, the green ones, and these are the clear coat guns. I don't want you guys taking the LSs and spraying clear coat, and I don't want you taking the clear coat and spraying base. That's not how it works. The blue cap, we didn't use it because we got solvent paint. So if you got second gen wet on wet applications for water-based paint, that's for you. Cool gun, looks awesome, but does not work for us, so there's no need for me to actually have it in my collection. When it comes to making a decision on these spray guns, see if it's a good fit for you. If you wanna make the investment, it will be an investment for a lifetime. And also make sure you rewatch the video and I show you how to use the gun. You don't have to use my perfect settings, and I'm still working with it just a little bit to get it just dialed in properly. But make sure that you do dial in that fan a little bit and lower that pressure just a little bit if too much air is coming out because that will take the clear or base, atomize it too much. You'll get too much in the air like any other spray gun before it hits the panels. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this video encourages you to get out there and learn what the best spray gun is for you, whether it's this gun or another one. Guys, this is Brian from Paint Side reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next episode.